welcome to New Brighton Now. This is the show about the people, places, and events in the city of New Brighton. I'm your host, Lynn Redlinger. On today's show, we're going to meet a local fly tire, find out about some upcoming programs in Parks and Rec, and learn some moves to get in balance. Well, there may be snow on the lakes and a cold wind biting at your face, but right now, we're going to think spring. My first guest is an author, an instructor, and an avid fly tire. Joining me today is Scott Hansen. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for having me. Now, how long have you been interested in fishing? Uh, interested in fishing since um, since I was a little boy. Um, I've always fished as far as I can remember, so 35 years or more. Okay. <laughs> and then tying flies. Mm -hmm. When did that become an interest? Uh, that, that became an interest when I was 10. I got my first fly tying kit oh, really? uh, from my parents and my dad kind of knew how to tie some flies and taught me what he knew. And uh, I took some classes from at local fly shops and just got into it and I've been doing it ever since. Okay. And now I imagine this is kind of a hobby. It doesn't take up a lot of room. And no, it doesn't. Um, I've got uh, quite a desk in my <laughs> basement office that's Got a lot of stuff in it, but uh, I can keep it pretty well hidden from the pets and the kids and stuff. Sure, so, yeah. sure. Okay, now I know you've just written an article. I did. Yeah, I, I have written a few articles for Fly Tire Magazine. Um, the, my latest article is about this fly that I'm going to tie tonight. It's called a skid mark. Uh, the article is, is supposed to be in the spring uh, issue coming up, so okay. we'll see what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, skid mark, is there a reason <laughs> for that name? Well, it's kind of an odd name. Um, I came up with this fly about 10 years ago, and I, I was working at a fly shop at the time, and I showed it to my buddy Ron, and he just thought it looked like it should be called a skid mark, okay. and uh, that's, I went with it, and that's the name it has right till, still. So. Okay, well, I'm going to let you demonstrate it and okay. tell our viewers all about what you're doing. Okay. Well, I've got this uh, fly started here uh, already in my vise. Before I came here, I put some, some uh, lead dumbbell eyes on there to give it a little bit of weight and some uh, lead wires wrapped around the hook as well just to give it a little extra weight. Uh, I've got my thread started on the hook here. And I've got just a, this is a spool of uh, specially made fly tying thread on my bobbin here uh, that I used to wrap it around the hook shank. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to wrap my thread all the way back to the bend of the hook and just let it hang. And then I've got uh, some purple bunny fur. This is actually fur. It's still on the hide. Oh my. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you don't like animal parts, you probably shouldn't get into <laughs> fly tying. But. Um, so I'm going to use some bunny fur here, it's dyed purple. I'm just going to tie this on the hook shank back here at the, by the bend. I'm going to wrap around with my thread about six or eight times, get that on there nice and tight. Then I'm just going to kind of fold that back out of the way right now. And then I've got some uh, flashy stuff here called Palmer chenille. Um, some people might know chenille is like uh, a pipe cleaner without the wire in it. It's like it's got string in it. This is um, not really like actual chenille, but it's similar in that it, there's a string going through it. So it's uh, the fly tying industry, they call it a Palmer chenille. I'm going to tie that on the hook shank as well. Right back here in front of the bunny fur. Tie that in nice and tight. And then I'm going to wrap my thread up towards the eyes and just let it hang there in front of the eyes. Now I'm going to, uh, this Palmer chenille just gets wrapped around the hook shank to form the body of the fly. So I'm just going to wrap this around. Each wrap is going to be directly in front of the previous wrap. Try to get them nice and tight. As I do that, it's going to build a nice bulky shimmery, shiny body that kind of looks like a minnow or uh, it'll, it'll have the silhouette of a bait fish once I get done here. So I'm going to wrap this all the way up to the eyes. Just takes a little while here. Each time I go around the hook shank, I'm going to, I wrap or I kind of pull the previous fibers back so I don't um, mat them down and cover up the ones that I just wrapped. I'm going to go all the way up here, work my way up, and 
You can tie these uh, skid marks in pretty much any color combination. Even you have a special combination tonight. I, I do, <laughs> yeah. I decided to tie this one in Viking colors. I got the yellow eyes, uh, white pearl body, and then the purple rabbit fur strip. And um, just uh, we had a good season. I know it's over now, but I thought I'd <laughs> honor my favorite football team. One last time. Well, one last time, yeah. yeah. So now that I'm up by the eyes here, I'm going to do one last wrap and pull that straight up, bring my thread back over the eyes, and tie it off behind the dumbbell eyes here. And I'm going to take my scissors, trim that off real close, just kind of sweep these fibers back. And then I'm going to move my thread back up in front of the dumbbell eyes. And then I'm going to pull this rabbit skin fur straight forward over the top and wet that a little bit. I'm just going to tie that in place with the thread right in front of the eyes with a few wraps of thread. Go in here with my scissors, trim that off as close as I can and then I cover up that uh, bunny fur there with a few wraps of thread. Make a nice little thread head there. And then I take my tool, it's called a whip finisher, and I just make a finishing knot right like that in front. Trim that off, and my skid mark is all done. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, you offer classes, right? I do, yeah. I, I teach a lot of uh, community ed classes, uh, okay. beginning fly tying. So we've got some coming up in New Brighton. Yeah, yep. Uh, my next classes are in New Brighton. They start uh, February 10th. They're uh, three Saturday mornings in a row, the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th, 10 a.m., right at the community center. Okay. Uh, last I checked, there's some room left, so I'd okay. love to have some more students sign up for that. Sure. And then you do some in West St. Paul? Yep. I'll have some, the same kind of classes in West St. Paul if Saturday mornings don't work for you. Uh, West St. Paul classes are on Tuesday nights starting in March. And uh, I just uh, um, got set up some classes in Forest Lake in early May, too, if that oh, doesn't work. So. okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's an expo coming to town. There is. It's called the Great Waters Fly Fishing Expo. It's uh, the biggest fly fishing expo in the upper Midwest. It's at Hamlin University uh, in the middle of March. And I'll be tying there, I think, all weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just doing demonstrations and talking to people. Okay. Now, a fish. Yes. He's, what is he going to think that is? Uh, well, <laughs> this uh, in this color scheme, it doesn't really look like anything. <laughs> uh, but uh, salmon, um, big trout that swim out of the Great Lakes into the tributaries, mm -hmm. they like big flashy flies. Oh. Uh, that it's kind of got the si the silhouette of a fish, a bait fish. Yeah. But they like the fa the flashy colors too. So I don't know if they know what they think it looks like, but. You know, <laughs> fish aren't very smart sometimes, so okay. that's what as, I'm counting on. As long as they bite on right, it, right? Right, exactly, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like fun. It looks like a fun hobby. I and, enjoy it. Um, yeah, very nice. Thank you. Thanks for sharing us today. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for having me. Well, when we come back, we'll find out about some more happenings for springtime. But first, here's some information about CTV.